I'm Beth Ann. What's up? I'm Ayla. This is Let's Talk BL, a boys love podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. It is Sunday. It's a very special day of the week because we are back with another series Sunday. As you may know, we have changed up the Sunday episode. It is a grab bag of topics so this excited. week. We are talking about one series and one series only. And so what that means is if you have not watched this series, turn back now or prepare to be spoiled because you will be spoiled. <laughs> yeah. This is full of twists and turns, but like, in my opinion, somewhat predictable twists and turns. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, I think we're yeah. going to I think we're going to feel similarly about this series. Yeah. Yeah. So today we are talking about a show that I'll. I was really excited to be so into. This was so well developed. Such a good show. We'll get yeah. into that later. It is also featuring one of our closest friends. <laughs> friend of the podcast. Friend of the podcast. <laughs> friend of Ayla and Beth Ann. It's true. Porsche. You're my sky. You're my sky. Jude Mike Katong Fa. We haven't yelled that in so, so long. long. It's been so long. Listen, it's always on our bodies. But of course, <laughs> Tiche is back um, in the role of a freaking lifetime. I am obsessed Again, with his character. We'll, we will get into this. <laughs> but before that, so much before that, stuff. before that, nuts and bolts, yeah, yeah. please. Oh my God. I can't wait to talk about this series. It is 12 episodes. It's on IGE. It was made by YYDS Entertainment, which is like, I feel like new-ish. I feel like the people who created, who were on the production side of Ken Porsche came together to create this company because it is done by the director of Ken Porsche. Uh, a lot of the production from Ken Porsche is a part of this, which you can definitely tell. Oh yeah, look like so many overlapping locations. Yes. A lot of like, yeah, you you just you, you can tell. It has that aesthetic. It, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it stars as Ming up icon among men. <laughs> I mean, up is great. Ming will talk about it. Yes. Uh and then as Joe Poom, a revelation. Such a very a good little actor. A very seasoned actor, but obviously brand new to the BL world. And my God, what a gift we have been given. I know, it's true. Although these like boys who come from LaCorn world seem to like have a moment in BL and then quickly go back to yeah. They're like, never mind. <laughs> no, I'm just yeah. <laughs> I mean They're like, even this is too dramatic for me. And reasonably I so. so. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Okay, synopsis time. Now, another thing that we have changed for this season, if this is your first time back on series Sunday for season five, whoa. Insane. Is that back in the day we used to pull the we used to pull the official synopsis. We would pull it from like IGE or official. My Drama List yeah. or right, like some place yeah, yeah. that someone has written like an official synopsis. Yeah. This season, we decided it would be fun <laughs> for me to write the synopsis. Put your skills to the test. Off the top of my head. So right. Don't you have like, do you have a master's degree in like writing things? So I have a master's degree in publishing. There we go. I, my minor is in integrated communications. My focus was writing. My master's in publishing was Use those skills, writing. girl. Yes. I love it. Um. So my concentration was always creative writing. So yes. Fantastic. Um, I started my career as a writer. I don't do much copywriting now. Uh, anymore I but mean, in, in now, our now I'm copywriting yes again I'm back to my copywriting roots also go read our YouTube synopsis because those are really cute and fun and fresh sometimes sometimes I started doing SEO because you know for yeah. like growth or whatever so it's not as like fun and fresh as it used to be but I don't know <laughs> anyways yeah, yeah. I am writing the synopsis off the top of my head so I did write this literally less than five minutes ago so here we wait. go synopsis time <clears throat> <laughs> A stuntman falls in love with a boy that only likes him from the back, and then he literally falls <laughs> off a cliff and dies. Or does he? What will happen when the soul of a boy that's been burned is reincarnated and finds his way back to the man that made a million mistakes the first time around? Is it Stockholm Syndrome <laughs> or Serendipity? That's fantastic. You. I will say that synopsis gives me a much clearer picture of this series than any trailer ever did. We watched the trailer multiple times and we're yeah. like i don't get it yeah we even asked porsche we were like we literally had to ask porsche for help we watched the first episode and we were like hold on please what help does us it mean? i'm so confused please help me <laughs> i was like i don't get it and then yeah it it made sense eventually because i was like oh it's like harry potter where they like are another person throughout the series but you see them. I think that's the confusing part because oh, I understood that part. What I didn't understand was like, where did 
<laughs> winner Joe's soul go? Uh, That's what I was confused dead. about. I was like, why did he go to heaven? And because he was a good boy. Because well, I guess because he didn't have unfinished business. I don't really know. I'm not entirely sure. But also, we get a revelation towards the end of why Winter Joe was in the hospital, and potentially he did have some unfinished business. Right. I was like, where did Winter Joe's soul go? I mean, I was like, Joe was more it, important. Is it like in Supernatural <laughs> when like an angel enters your body, right? And like you're mm-hmm. still in there. So, oh, like, you're just is, suppressed. Yeah. Well, you're not like suppressed. You're just like, it's you, like, yeah, like you're still in there. Or like when you get possessed by a demon, it works both ways. Like you're oh, still you're, in there. You're and you're you aware. You see what's happening and you know what's happening. You're just not in control. Uh huh. So I was like, is that what's going on here? Like, no, that I think part, that Pum- is what was confusing to me. I was like, did he go into like dead Joe's? I think Poom Joe kicked him to the curb. He's like, get out. I need to go bang. I need to go bang up some more. Except he woke up and he didn't know what was happening. And he also was very sus of up. The only reason that he was like <laughs> he was like entertaining the whole situation is because Winter Joe's mom was gonna die. Yeah, it was, there, it, <laughs> it was all so confusing at the beginning. I know, and I never. I okay, you know what still is confusing to me? <laughs> still, right now, I'm uh-huh. sitting here thinking about this. Yeah, can Ming really be forgiven? Me too, because. I was watching the last couple of episodes last night and really I was like really paying attention because I had to rewatch episode nine because I'm not going to lie. Episode nine was hella boring because it was <laughs> just up crying over dead, right. dead. Yeah. Poom Joe for yeah. the whole episode. Yeah. Uh, but we but, but did. Like, he knows that Poom Joe is still alive. So that's why I'm not understanding. But like, we did get a lot of the loss of that ass. Like what? <laughs> Like, is is winner is winner Joe not not is he cute like enough? Not hot enough? Like like okay, we're I not gonna you were go there. The person, ooh, this is a good yeah. study. And like, are yeah. you in love with like the person the or soul. the packaging? Well, because that was that was um, Ming's whole argument when he saw him when he saw winner Joe get off the right. elevator. He was like, I knew in that moment I, it yeah. was you. I could feel it. I could yeah. But, like, again, it's like, are you in love with no. the packaging? Do you know why he was so distraught that whole episode? It's because it was his fault that he didn't get Poom Joe's face anymore. Like, I think that I think Ming was mourning the fact that, like, he had confirmation that he killed a man. Right. I. He, I, so he was like feeling bad for himself Yes I don't think I think he was feeling guilty I don't think that Ming can be redeemed I think that Joe can forgive him But I don't think he can be redeemed Because this the funniest part Is that a lot of the flashbacks that we get That, that Joe experiences through his like journey Into self-acceptance <laughs> Is that there's a lot of flashbacks in relation to Ming where he was being like he was being the stand in and he was being handcuffed to the couch like held against his will and so beaten, like in you know like <sighs> just boyfriend things <laughs> What it is so strange. We're going to get so much crap for this. You guys, if you listen to this and you're like, how dare you talk poorly about Ming? Please go watch the series. I love Poom. I think Poom is an incredibly, an incredible, or sorry, not Poom. Uh, Up. I mean, I, I love think, Poom as well. Yes. I love both of them. I think Up is an incredible actor. When we interviewed the, them, we both got off that interview and was like, Up though. Because we Up have. Up fantastic. He's we, wonderful. We have some Up trauma. And I'm not going to lie. The thing. Okay. I think. I loved Win, Lovely Writer. I love Up. I think that when an actor can make a character feel can make a character feel so real yeah that you as a viewer have strong feelings about the character whether those feelings are good or bad right like whether you just fought like um a good example is nunu and cutie pie right like that character nunu did like portrayed so well that you want to love him and you want him to have the best and you just want like you want for him so much, right? Like, you love him so much. That is a credit to Nunu's acting skills. And the same is true of Up with Ming, just on the opposite side, where, like, 
this character up did such a good job of portraying all of the different levels and layers yeah. to this character. This character was so dynamic. That when you can sit around and talk about a character, like we could probably spend this whole episode just talking about Ming yeah. and like Ming's trauma and yeah. why Ming is the way he is and can Ming be redeemed, right? Because that's the question is like, what... Like, there is so much to this character that, again, Up portrays so well. That yeah. when you can have such strong feelings about a character, it is because Up as an actor did such a good job with this character. And so yeah. if what you just said, and I asked the question, I didn't even say, I don't think he can. I said, could he? Because yeah. I'm kind of on the fence. I'm like, well, if you're given a second chance, isn't that the whole point? point right like learning from your mistakes but what makes a mistake so bad right that it can you can never come back from it and i i don't know the i don't know that ming had that i just don't know right and well, so <clears throat> that being said all of this is to say is that like we're talking about ming we're not talking about up please don't get in your feels <laughs> please don't be like how dare you up is wonderful yeah you're right up is wonderful me this completely different yeah. person is questionable <sighs> because i've tried to play close attention as to how joe got to his forgiveness right and ming made a case for himself that he was never in love with tong he was in love with the back of joe's head and that was the justification he gave as to why he was so passionate to defend Tong, that it was never about Tong all along. It was about the back of Joe's head. So I interpreted that conversation differently. Okay, what did you think? I interpreted what he was saying. Like, I like sometimes it is difficult, too, because we are watching, like, translated subtitles. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I do try and, like, yeah, read same. between the lines and, like, with the amount of Thai that I do know. Yeah. And, you know, that paired with the subtitles – Paired with like, I don't know, just my perception Context. of the characters yeah. after watching the series for like the whole season. Right. What I got from that or what I thought he was trying to say is that he was never in love with Tong. He was in love with the idea of Tong. Mm -hmm. Right. That it, uh, it was never about the packaging. Right. I think it is what I felt like he was saying is it was never about the body itself. It was about this like idea of like because he falls in love with Tong like based on this like clip that he's seen in the right. mall right of this like strong protector mm. right of this like good pure person right like Who and so good, he, right and so he was like in love with the idea of tong right. in that movie and tong in that movie was actually joe right is what he was saying is it wasn't like i know he literally said, like, the yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. not literally but like this person right. and so like he thought he was in love with Tong because in his brain he connected those two things of like right. kind of like we do as viewers a lot of the time as fans of people. Yeah. Especially if because we hear these stories in the West a lot, right? It's very common to be like never meet your idol. Yeah. Right? Of like there you have this perception of who a person is and you just want it so badly to we fall in love with their you persona that. yeah you romanticize a person and so like he i i felt like his argument was that the the person he had romanticized in his head the whole time was actually joe yeah that makes sense <laughs> So in that case, all those things that he did against Joe for Tong were actually for Joe. No. See, this is where it starts getting complicated. Yeah. It's like I understand him and I understand his layers. And like I'm a big loyalty person. So like, listen, I would never actually <laughs> handcuff somebody to a couch <laughs> like in defense well, of someone else. Right. But that's. That's the whole thing is that, like, are you your actions? Can you be forgiven for your actions if it's not fundamentally your character? Well, or, I mean, even if it is <laughs> your character, but you've learned from those mistakes, right? That's my question is, like, what action is completely irredeemable, right? Because, like, essentially the whole point of this show is, like, you're given a second chance, yeah, right? Like, yeah. he's given the second chance to not be a huge piece of shit. Yeah. And he's like, I love this person so much that I genuinely have changed. Right. And so he, he, because 
the question is it comes down to the punishment right is like you have to pay for your actions and like this this is yeah. why like in modern society we have things like prison and, <laughs> and it is supposed Should to men be go to prison well and it's supposed to be like prison yeah. is supposed to be for reformation right yeah like, it's supposed to be to introduce right. you rehabilitation back, right? yeah like it's this is why we put little kids in timeout, right? Like you get punishment for your bad actions so that you yeah. learn from them and then you can do better in the future. And so it's like, well, his actions led to the death of this person that he was in love with. And he was forced for like a whole year to like make sad soup and whatever. <laughs> right. Like, true. <laughs> Makes so it's like soup. did he, essentially the question is like did he do his time and did he learn from his actions and so therefore now is he redeemable well and you know what i kind I don't know. of I, what i love about the development of this story because i will say <clears throat> i was thinking about this yesterday because i saw a lot of people being like this is the best bl ever this is the bl of the year especially on our up and boom interview a lot of people were like this is so great and yes, this was an incredible story and this was a really well done series. Was is it my favorite? No, but that's like my personal choice. I will say it definitely is up there with like development because that's what I have a lot of issue with in BL is that there's not a ton of script development and there's not a lot of like emphasis on the storytelling and I thought they did a great job. And so to that point is that Ming stayed consistently Ming through the whole story even as because if you think about it, the actions that he did at the beginning when he was, like, fighting for Tong were just as dramatic as when he had the change of focus and he was now focused on the fact that, like, he had lost Joe. And so he was punishing himself, which is – which I guess is, like, appropriate – in the whole grand scheme of things is that he's punishing himself through the time that he had lost Joe because like he had nobody else to and because he deserved it. Right. Like, yeah. I think that for me is maybe where I lean towards. Yes, he can be redeemed is because like he recognized, mm -hmm. he, right. He didn't try to excuse it away. He didn't say I never did a bad thing or this was all in pursuit of love. Like he was like, I did a bad thing and I deserve to be punished and no one else is punishing me, right? Like, he didn't go to prison. He didn't lose work. He didn't, right? Like, he had no external force punishing him and so yeah. he took it upon himself to punish himself and I think that's like... I recently saw a quote that said, apology without change is manipulation and I feel like there was significant change in Ming... I think he tried to change. I wouldn't say significant change, and here's why. Oh, yeah. Because when he first is, like, A, doesn't know that Winter Joe is Poom Joe. Mm -hmm. And then also when he starts to get suspicious and is like, but is he? <laughs> he treats Winter Joe very badly. Horribly. Right? Like, yeah. he is, like, you, he basically, like, prostitutes him yeah he makes him a sex slave yeah makes him a sex slave is mean to him like he's mean so like that's what i mean is like there's not mm. i wouldn't say significant change because like the way that he acts towards the outside world did not change Do you yeah what i'm saying it definitely took a minute for ming to like fully change right and so like I don't but know stay true to like, who Ming was. Yeah. I don't know that I would say. This is why it's confusing. This is why it's That's complicated. True. Do you know who also I thought was really interesting? Uh, Tong is a horrible person. Remains a horrible person. Because even till the end, I, I paid attention to that whole conversation that Joe and Ming and Tong have when they're standing outside after, uh, after they've like resolved in the very final episode. And Tong comes out, and instead of apologizing for anything, he goes, thank you. He just kept saying thank you to people. And you're like, damn, this man is still the worst. Yeah. He remains the worst. Yeah. He was not taking any responsibility for well, any of his actions. Tong is one of those people that just likes the idea of people being in love with them. Yeah. I know someone like this, and, like, we're friends, and I don't really hold it against him, but, like, it's not the best quality to have. Yeah. 
in the sense that like because you're like somebody will love me no matter what i do well and i think what it shows is like a lack of self-love in a sense is like you depend so much on you if you love the idea of people loving you that much like being in love with you like romantically right not like a people not like necessarily even like people pleasing qualities or Mm -hmm. like i just or like being generally personable where you're like i want people to like me because i want to interact with the world in a positive way right like you want someone to be romantically in love with you or like romantically into Mm -hmm. you or sexually attracted to you right like the yeah that, yeah, that yeah, yeah. realm of things right and you just like the idea of it and you feel no empathy for the person that is it for the other person in the equation right i think that shows a lack of self-love because you're like you're using 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 taking up taking up yeah, taking yeah, yeah. up you're not like it's all to feed your own sense of worth and I think that's what's going on with Tong is like yeah. he has no real sense of self worth, and like I think he's just one of those people that like he just loves the idea of people being in love with him. Yeah, yeah, and sweet May, that girl, she, I, I mean, you can't choose who you, <laughs> you love. Like, it just happens to you. Yeah, I would say Tong, Tong is not redeemable because there was no. There were no qualities in him that you're like, yeah, yeah, he's still yeah. a good person. You know who is a good person and remains a good person is never <gasps> yes. not a bad person throughout son. the whole son. son. He's perfect. He's perfect. Everything about Son is perfect. He rolls in and he's perfect from the beginning. He literally gets into a fist fight for this man. <laughs> I know. I do appreciate like, how much he punched me. He literally gets into a fist fight for this man and is like, expects nothing in return. Like, it's very much yeah. not even a, I'll love you enough for the both of us. It's a, like, I love you and what that love means can be different depending on our relationship, yeah. right? Because you brought this up a lot during Only Friends mm-hmm. where you're like, is it okay uh-huh. to still be hanging out with somebody that you know is in love with you? Yeah. And I think that Son has proved that the answer is yes if that person is like, Res- I can still love you. Respect your boundaries. But... Yeah. Not even it's not about boundaries, but it's like I can love you, but that love can transform, right? Mm. Like once I realize that you're not into me romantically, I still love you. And so my love is going to transform into this other kind of love. Right? Like Yeah. I thought about this too, because when they do flashbacks of the whole of Son's interactions with Joe, you see you see him talking to Joe and trying to uh and giving him advice based on his own feelings towards Joe and so it was interesting because even up until the last moment when we find out that uh wait what what did we find out it was that conversation that Joe and Son have when he was like I oh it's because Joe is like oh I still love Ming and I don't know why like I keep choosing him and and Son is like well I still like you and I keep choosing you even though you're not choosing me and um I think it's also on the on the other person to have discernment that throughout every situation Son is on Joe's side a hundred percent and he's never going to defend Ming and so his his advice is always going to err towards the side of Ming is a horrible person and Joe should not be with him I don't know that that necessarily like I think that can overlap into like loyalty right of like Mm -hmm. this is like and that's just my own personal like outlook on life sort of coloring my I, perception because I'm a very loyal person and I you, very much like value loyalty in my friends because in, in this situation yeah because in this situation it's like what is your motivation right whenever right. somebody whenever somebody gives you advice or like you're talking about something you think about what the, what their intentions are behind what they're saying and for Son, it's always going to be colored by the fact that he likes joe and he wants to be with joe so is his advice to not be with ming for joe but see i don't you know? i don't think that his because I think the difference here is he knows Joe is not going to choose him. Yeah, he, he does. knows and has accepted this. And so I don't think that his 
actions are necessarily colored by that. Mm-hmm. I think that he's just doing what he feels like is right for this person that he cares about. Mm. I don't think it's manipulative. But again, that's just my perception. That's like my outlook on life coloring my perception of the show because like yeah. I don't actually think about people's motivations when they're giving me advice. Mm. Like I, I and maybe it's me being naive, but I always just take people at face value. Like you and I have had this situation where like we were hanging out with this person and they like had to go. And the uh-huh. reason they said they had to leave, I just took it at face value and I was like, yeah, it makes sense. And you were so sus. You I'm very like, skeptical. I don't think that's real. I yeah. think, he, you know, this and that and the other. And I was like, but why, like, why would he tell us something that's like, I just don't, I, I see the best in people, I guess, mm-hmm. like accidentally. I don't know. I just, I never question in my real personal life, like right. as a person, I, because I would never, I think it's because I would never have like a purposeful motiva- motivation behind giving someone a- advice or saying something to someone. Like I, anytime I'm talking, it's literally just like, this is what I think is best for this person in this moment, not how can this serve me? Mm. Like I don't, because I don't behave that way, I just automatically assume other people don't behave that way i just know enough people who are like uh i don't want to do this thing and so instead of i know enough people who are just uh, not honest about how they feel in a situation and so instead of being like hey i'm just like i want i'm over it i want to go they'll be like oh i have i'm i have to go hang out with somebody else right like so many people do this where they give excuses to why they don't want to choose you they want to go do something else i just like will flat out and like Recently, it's been a whole thing in my family because I've had a lot of dance obligations lately. And I'll be like, you guys, I have to go. I have dance. (laughs) And like you even asked me, I showed up to dance one night and you were like, did you have to make an excuse? And I was like, no, I just said I was going to dance. Well, at this point, like I don't make early on, you were making excuses. But at some point you were like, "Okay, I'm just going to tell I'm going to dance. And they've like like, accepted it. I don't (laughs) make like excuses. I'm just like, no, this is the thing I'm going to do. Like, which is where Ming got in this whole this whole series was at some point with his dad because that's the other part of this is that with his dad Mike his brother is like he's never been bold enough to tell our dad straight up the, the truth and so I guess that's where you also get his character development of he finally got to a place where he was like this is the person I love and I want to be with him and so I have to be bold enough to confront the one of the people in my life that's going to be most against this and therefore he finally was like dad I have to like he truly gave up everything whether or not he he believed that like his dad was going to push him yeah yeah because his his dad was redeemable and his dad got to a place where he did say like okay I potentially his dad was pushing him to a place where of growth of like you have to be mature enough to hold fast to what you want because Ming is a very immature character throughout this whole series up until the end where he finally was like I'm gonna choose Joe and I'm gonna give up my money and my business because a lot of the underlying conversation in this was the money right right of like everybody needed money everybody and so I mean that's the whole the whole conversation in psychology the like the one study that everybody goes to is that like if your child was sick and needed and needed a drug would you steal for it right like that's the that is the like number one psychology question of like when push comes to shove and a person that you love and hold so dear needs something are you willing to sacrifice everything are you willing to sacrifice your freedom are you willing to sacrifice your morals to get that thing for that person and Ming gets there and therefore Is he forgivable for everything he's done up until that point? I think that's up to Joe. I think that's up to the person that you're truly in that relationship with. The person that you hurt gets to decide. But I think that everybody... So in one sense, yes. I think always, of course, the person that is hurt gets to decide. But at the same time, I think that like the other people that sort of witnessed it. Like, I think that it would be fair if Son was like, he's irredeemable. Yeah. Because Son, at the same time, had to experience his friend dying because of this person. Right? Like, yeah. their... Ming's actions to Joe didn't just affect Joe. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. So, yeah. like, 
I think that if Joe is like this person is redeemable, I don't think it necessarily means everyone else, including the viewers, Mm -hmm. have to also feel that way. Yeah. I mean, is that the question? If the person responsible for is the person responsible for your death forgivable if you got to come back in a in a bo- in a cute body? <laughs> I mean, that's up to you, but I think again to Son, Son still had to experience his friend dying, right? Like he still not had just to his go friend, through, the love like, of this, his this life. You loved, right? Like that's the other thing. The story that Son tells about his relationship with, with Joe is fascinating where he was like, I didn't like Joe. I found out he was gay. And then I thought he was, he was taking advantage of me. And then I fled to Korea. And then while I was in Korea, I had a gay awakening and realized I was actually in love with Joe. I like, that was a fascinating revelation. Yeah. It was like, DM Son. I like, Wow what just wow yeah that was a that was an interesting story of like yeah i i found that that i mean so much the the other part of this series is the depth of every relationship and every character and every character even like oh i forget his name but the guy whose wife always makes everybody lunch right like those little details yeah like those little details i think just make this series so just dynamic like it's so yeah. good i know i i really liked the the little three amigos or in no, not, Pee-woo, not not main guy but the like stunt coordinator guy the guy that like works in the room with them i was like wait no Woot is like the main dude and his wife like got hurt also being a stunt woman not him the other like the main guy who like they're always like, man, I've been waiting for your wife's like fish. Oh, or whatever. the one that has all the tattoos. Yes. Yeah, he disappeared kind of through the end of like, the season. Yeah. It was cool that like even that. That's what I meant by like even a character that small. Oh, I see. I see. Had yeah, yeah, such yeah. Depth and detail to he his really story. Really did. Right. Like we know about his wife, and we know that like, and they they managed to build this like lore around this character that's mm-hmm. just like a side throwaway character. You know what yeah, I mean? Really, like, like yeah. that's so impressive. He was like in the first yeah. five episodes. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, but I did like this little trio in Son and Peewoot and yes. Joe. Uh, they really tried to be there for Joe and they are his family because we find out that Joe was an orphan through much of his life. And therefore like they actually were his family and they stayed true to him. Um, also side note, Poom is an excellent crier. Yeah. That man can make a teardrop in the blink of an eye. Yeah. And my gosh, that I think like, it's the Lacorn of it all. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. In the beginning, I definitely thought P. Woot was gonna be evil. Like I kept waiting oh, for the other shoe to drop. Like I kept waiting yeah, for it. I that makes sense. He was the one that kind of like told Joe about the like sketchy production, and he was yeah. the one that was like He was kind of, like, orchestrating. He was, like, a puppeteer for a little while there. And so, like, I definitely kept waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, I kept Mm. waiting for him to to be, like, revealed that he was evil. Yeah. Somebody also made a really funny edit of a BL between Joe and Woot. And I thought it was really funny. It was really funny. But, no, people and Joe are big, like, like, daddy, but not... (laughs) <laughs> not like daddy but like yeah, papa, yeah, papa. Yeah, yeah. It was big papa vibe, big P- granddaddy vibes pinong vibes yeah 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 uh i wish we had gotten more development between mike and jim i thought their little i love jim as a character he had again he had such a small role as ming secretary but i thought he played that character so well and so yeah. funny and he like he was almost that comedic relief, but, like, in a very soft way. Well, and this is another reason, not to circle back on this, but that Ming is has not had full change is because he uh-huh. treats Jem like shit. Yes. He treats him so really bad. Does. My God. Yeah, when, when uh, we kind of hit the climax of Ming treating Winter Joe like crap where he like is holding him down because uh, Ming is drunk and Jim is fully just standing in the room being like, yeah, yeah, Yeah. cool, cool. Cause he's also been Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. Cause he's always been in love with Mike or maybe Mike has always been in love with Jim. 
unclear. No. It's like, is it gay? Is it, is it's it? gay. Is it? Yeah. I think it is. I mean, it's like big JJ Fong and big dragon where mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also in touch is such a good character uh, or such a good actor. Uh, yeah. I really loved for all that it's worth. I loved love sick. And so to see him make a comeback has been really cool to see. Uh, I think that's all the characters. I think that's there everything. Was, yeah. There was just so much. Um, yeah, this was, this is a funny series because like going into it, I was like, I, I honestly don't know what this is. I, and then we, we figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also just was <laughs> so happy to see Piche back on my screen. Like I, I wasn't sure how I would feel about it because of your, my sky, Jude, my Katong yeah. Pop, right? Like, because of that, like, I definitely was even nervous for, like, Sia's first thing back after You're My Sky. Because I was like, Killed it. am I going yeah. to carry some sort of, like, baggage into sure. this as, like, a viewer? But there's some and good then, like, actors. Especially with, like, <laughs> Piche. And, yeah. like, I did watch Chris a little bit when he was in um, My Princess or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Like, princess yeah. show. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the name of that. It's like. I don't know, like sweet and salty prince. I don't know something like yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, my sassy princess. Yeah, that one. there you go. There you go. I was like, I don't know. She's salty, but no, she's sassy. <laughs> she's she's sassy. sassy. She's sassy. She's not salty. She's sassy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was like a little bit worried. Yeah. But no, like it, Portia is such a good actor that like I definitely like I wasn't. I see him as it son. It wasn't like that's my friend. It was like okay. Yeah. I was like son. Oh my god. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um. Yeah, this show is so good. I think the question here is because we kind of were mixing up the question. Oh, but also side note, Winner being in this was such a fun surprise. Yes. I we love Winner. Go watch our Winner interview. Um, but it was funny cuz I saw somebody tweeted <laughs> And they're like, poor winner. He gets such a little role. He he's only going to be seen in the reflections. But you guys, nah, he got paid. But you guys, but they get, they sign up for. They know what they're signing. He knows up what for. he's signing up for, and like he got a paycheck. I also thought they did really a, a cool job with how they when they revealed winner Joe and how they like showed his reflection and yeah, things, yeah. especially in the last episode. They do a lot of it with like the transitions at that uh, press conference when he's an actor and they like show him on the poster and then they show his interact. Like it was such a cool, you, you are reminded at the last minute that like it's still winner's face and Poom is still in there. So like that just if, or that like reconciliation of like who actually is interacting with the world and who every or what uh, packaging is. yeah everyone's yeah. place yeah it was so interesting I also had a thought where it's like this is that body switch situation and how interesting it would have been if if uh Poom had or if Joe had come back as a girl <laughs> it's oh, like oh yeah. god okay so I'm gonna so we have new questions for the series Sunday yeah. this season but before that I think an additional question is can Ming be redeemed? Just yes or no. You like no. I don't even want explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just because I kind of want it to be like a poll. I want to like I want to be able to do like percentages. Yes or no. Um, the follow up yeah. is: Would you watch a season two of this show? I absolutely would. But I want it focused on like Son finding love. Yeah. And like everyone else being the like side characters in his life. I agree. Yeah. Um, I want to yeah I want to see Son with the makeup artist because that yeah. was implied at the very end. Mm. And then the next question is, if you could recast the main roles, which would be Mean and M- Ming and Joe. Joe, who would you recast in those roles? I think a man Ben would be interesting if we're staying Ooh. in the same like world. Yeah. Yeah. A man Ben. Yeah. Yep. Um, Actually, I think man would be really fun as like Tong. <laughs> oh yeah, he would kill he Tong, would, right? Like that would be so interesting. It's always fun when you have such an evil character being played by someone so hot that you're like, yeah. Does his face? You're just- like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. It's like that that chart where it's like how hot you are versus how much I'll I'll listen to your cat. You know, I'll listen who, about your cat. You know who would be a good um. A good Joe would be Kim Goodburn. Oh, yeah, he would. 
He, I don't know who, I don't know who his Ming would be, but he would be a good Joe. Yeah, who would be a good pair for him? He just ha- he has the like softness, but he's so attractive, and he's like, yeah, I could see him as a stunt man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Long Lee could play any character in this show because it's Long sure, Lee. It's Long Lee. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, interesting enough, the first couple that came to mind was first in Kowtung. Oh, okay. I think because for Heart Killers, they've made Kowtung pretty like rough yeah, around yeah, the yeah. edges, and so he would be an interesting Ming or an interesting Joe, and I think first would be an interesting Ming. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think first has enough dynamic. We've just seen him play these like kind of soft, rough around the edges characters yeah. lately that I think, yeah, they're ta- they're, I'll be interested to see June Dunk in, in these types of roles. Yeah. Cause Dunk has never played dirty. If that makes sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they're making him like, yeah, a garage boy. I think. Well, first of all, I think he can pull it off. I think um, so, too. I think another interesting one would be, like... <laughs> yes. Like a like a top ten and Michael. <gasps> Ooh, yeah, that would be fun. That would be interesting yeah. because I think... It wouldn't be what you I I I think the way it should be played if it was top ten and Michael, I think Michael would be the Joe and top ten would be the Ming. Ooh, is how I would cast it. Well, and then because top ten, I feel like could has the like, like I think that at least based on what we saw in Pit Babe, like he could very much pull off the like rich boy with a like. Bla- like laissez faire yeah. attitude, right? Like I, I think I think Top Ten could really pull that off. Well, and you know who and would I play? And I think Michael could be very soft. And you know who could play Tong? I mean, Pavel. Pop. Oh, P Pop. <laughs> oh. I mean, because they have that like three, oh my God. that like love triangle dynamic in real life. And oh my so- god! Oh my god! Wait, I'm literally gonna cry. <laughs> I'm literally gonna throw up and cry. Oh my god! Would be I perfect. literally feel like I'm about to cry. Oh my god, P Pop. Oh my god, he's so hot. Oh my god, he could he could manipulate me. I literally don't care. I literally don't care. He could be like be in love with me, but fuck you. I literally don't care. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to go watch. Pop has been in some straight series recently. I need to go watch those because I oh think he god. plays a bad dude in that too. I think yeah. it just came out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your passion for Pop is really elevated. <laughs> <laughs> if you've made it this far in this special Sunday series Sunday, um, our interview, go watch our interview with me with Mick and Pop because it's so funny because Pop is like the most like He's so soft, soft, quiet, but damn the character he plays in Pippi. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're this like, is yes, all based on, on like his acting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not like P Pop the like boy. Yeah, I mean that's I yeah. Truly, the evolution that we've gotten in BL is this push and pull between, like, go touch grass because these people are not who they say they are, but we still have to believe the ship work. I think that's where the, like, headbutting has gotten to recently because we're getting a lot of, like, people's actual real lives and, like, people being, like, having relationships and friendships publicly that before we didn't really see because like I think mainly because of COVID like they weren't allowed to hang out and now we've gotten to the point where people are revealing like their real lives on top of ship work on top of characters in a series and so I think BL fans are just like having a mind meld of like who's what's real what's What's real but like you guys (laughs) none of it's real none of it's all the game we're playing we're We're playing the sim an elaborate like an elaborate role playing game. Yeah. Like all of us together. Yeah. We are also playing a part in this game. It's yeah. a game. Yeah. Like we're playing characters. We're all playing just like a weirder version of D D. <laughs> nice. I like that. I think that's where she did it. Yeah. This has been Let's Talk Beal. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow all things Let's Talk Beal at Let's Talk Beal. <laughs>